Good morning from St. Charles Presbyterian Church. We are so blessed that you have decided to join us. There's so many other things you could be doing uh, on Sunday morning, or some of you are watching it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. Um, and, you could, and we're so glad that you've decided to, to join this congregation of faith um, and challenge and uh, be part of our church community. Uh, so I do w- want to welcome you. Um, we do want to point out that uh, we are having Easter flower sign-ups, and we really encourage you to uh, buy an Easter flower in all different colors and sizes and, and types and varieties um, in honor or in memory of a loved one, or just for yourself because you want those Easter flowers. And we pray that you do that. You'll see that in the slide uh, right after this morning's announcements, uh, and you see it in our newsletter or our bulletin. Uh, so download those things, sign up, or call the church office to do that. We want to point out that we mentioned last week that our COVID numbers here in St. Charles, uh, Missouri, uh, have been steadily, uh, dramatically going down. Uh, this year, this week, we've had a little bump back up, um, but uh, we, we see some real hope. And, and because of the numbers, uh, they're going down, and that we've done a survey with our older members, and out of 55 uh, people that we've talked to, 91% of our older people um, have had uh, the, a vaccine or um, has scheduled a vaccine that will have, you know, the first one, um, you know, this week. And so uh, we're excited about that. And, and because of that, we've decided um, that we would like to have a Easter morning outside live worship service. Again, Easter morning, live worship service, and we're going to do it right outside the North Hex doors in um, the Circle Drive. More information will be, um, be coming towards you. We'll send an email, but we'll talk about the actual time. I don't know if I'll do a sunrise service, or it better be we're definitely going to be morning time, um, at the latest at 8, but it could be as early, you know, as a 7 or 6.30 in the morning. And what we're going to talk about that and what that looks. It's going to be like a 20 or 30 minute service. You need to bring your own lawn chairs, and you kind of keep your social distance distance and you can wear your mask and if you've been vaccinated you could sit next to people that also been vaccinated Um, but it'd be our first time we do anything live and this would probably be a prelude to uh, the session making a decision on when we could actually go we need to be down below the five percent and we are back up in the upper sixes and uh, in our county uh, and especially the three zip codes but we're getting there Uh, the end is in sight and so pay attention and we'll give more information next week and so this is our, our fourth week of our sermon series called Come, Follow Me, A Disciple's Journey Through Limp. very first week, we joined Jesus at his baptism, and uh, we are challenged what it means for us to be baptized in Christ. And then all of a sudden, we joined with Jesus in the wilderness, and we were challenged our own identity as disciples, like he was challenged as his identity identity and as God's children. And and last week, we took up the Beatitudes that Jesus taught us, and we were asked how we too can embody these kingdom values that we were taught. And today is our halfway through our journey of Lent, and this is the time we're going to step back and we're going to reflect on all these challenges that we've had these last three weeks to see um, how we're actually uh, doing. And so that's what today's all about. And we're glad that you're here on this fourth Sunday of Lent. And after the year that we've had, I know that we all are impatient, kind of chomping at the bit to return to the way of life that it was before the pandemic. But our God who has been with us reminds us to think how this time, which is a good time as it's halfway through, um, Lent, how this time could be used to transform us into the people that we are meant to be. So let us prepare our hearts to receive God's Word and faithfully follow Jesus on the disciples' journey through Lent.
Good morning. Lent calls us to follow Jesus as his disciples and live as God asks us to live. So let us prepare our hearts to be a blessing God hopes we will be as we join in our call to worship. From the shadows of isolation and small gatherings, come, young and old, sanctify yourselves before the Lord. We gather to hear the word of God. We congregate to be with our God who brings us the light of hope. Come and do not delay. Return to God from the silence of our homes or in socially distanced worship spaces. We gather to be with Jesus who will not let anything now or ever separate us. From the hollowness of our hearts and the hunger for human touch, come cry out to God. Trust in God's mercy. We gather to renew our faith and to be with the Spirit who feeds us for the Lenten journey, who marks us as God's very own. Amen. Part of our spiritual practices is to work on being open to the one who overflows with love for us. Lent is a time to place our trust in the one who illumines our path and to learn to share his life-changing light with others. So may the light and the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all.
In this season of Lent, we reflect on our journey of faith with Christ, remembering that the people wandered in the desert for 40 years and that though Jesus himself was tempted in the wilderness, he often went to a deserted place to pray. God knows the trials and temptations we face in our lives can be like crossing through a wilderness. And yet sometimes it is only once we have passed through those difficult times that we are able to recognize how God helped us through. On this fourth, fourth Sunday, Sunday of Lent, Lent we, we remember, remember God's, God's faithfulness, faithfulness and, and that, that God is the one who leads us on the pathways through the desert and wilderness and, and turns the desert into pools of water. water. Join, Join us in our, our Lenten, Lenten prayer. prayer. As, As the, the days lengthen and bulbs are preparing deep in the earth, dear, dear God, may, may we be ready for what you are preparing to grow in us. us. Nourish us so that we might bear spiritual fruit. In the name of Christ, with whom we journey towards the cross, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts to receive God's word in prayer. Living God, guide us now by your Holy Spirit that through the words of scripture and sermon, we might faithfully follow Christ in our prayer and attitude as his disciples. Speak to us the word as we listen with open hearts, contrite spirits, and a willingness to continue our Lenten journey. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is a song from the hymn book we call Psalms, chapter 119, verses 1 through 16. Listen to the Psalms lesson on how to engage in our putting our faith into practice. Our Lord, you bless everyone who lives right and obeys your law. You bless all those who follow your commands from deep in their hearts and who never do wrong or turn from you. You have ordered us always to obey, to obey your teachings. I don't ever want to stray from your words. Thinking about your teachings will keep me from doing some foolish thing. I will do right and praise you by learning to respect your perfect ways. Young people can live a clean life by following your word. I worship you with all my heart. Don't let me walk away from your commands. I treasure your word above all else. It keeps me from sinning against you. I praise you, Lord. Teach me your truths. With my own mouth, I tell others the good news that you have spoken. Obeying your instructions brings us much happiness as being rich. I will study your teachings and follow your footsteps. I will take pleasure in your holy instructions and remember your words. Here ends God's ancient story for our Lenten journey. Amen.
let's prepare our hearts to receive the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God of light and love, we come to worship you, not with empty words and hollow acts of piety, but with lonely, aching hearts. We long for the days of joy and gladness that we've known with you and with one another. So as Jesus shined your light into our troubled world, may your word read and now shared bring rays of your holy light into the dark corners of our souls, our lives, and into our world. For it's in his holy name we pray. Amen. Our gospel lesson this day comes to us from the gospel of Matthew. We stay in Matthew to hear the story of the beginning of Jesus' ministry, working his way to the cross, chapter 6, verses 1 through 18. Now hear the gospel of our Lord. Jesus tells us to stay. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that you may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like those hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and be at the street corners, so they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. uh, For they think that they will be heard because of their many, many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask of Him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And finally, whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they're fasting. Truly, I tell you that they receive their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face clean so that the, your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret then will reward you. My friends, these words of challenge, these words of hope are ours to lead us so we can follow more faithfully the one that we serve. Amen. I want to be the kind of person who does the right thing. And I don't just mean the big things where right and wrong are obvious and easy, but I mean the small things, the subtle unnoticed things, like helping my neighbor when she's shoveling a driveway. You know, what I do when no one's watching. Because it's so easy to let those small things slip away. And it's, it's those endless choices that we make every day that shape us and the kinds of people 
that we are. A friend of mine gave me insight into the story about Jesus and his disciples that I'd heard before, but it's just taken on whole new meaning. Rabbis were the most honored, respected, revered people anywhere. I mean, the best of the best of the best are the only ones who got to be rabbis. And this rabbi comes down the beach and says to you, come follow me. Well, what's he really saying? What he's really saying is, I think you could do what I do. I mean, he's, he's saying you can be like me. All of this, to me, has huge implications for how we understand Jesus. I mean, faith in Jesus is important, but what about Jesus? Faith in us. I mean, Jesus has faith that you can follow him and you can be like him. He believes it. May you believe in God, but may you come to see that God believes in you. May you have faith in Jesus, but may you come to see that Jesus has faith that you can be like him, a person of love and compassion and truth, a person of forgiveness and peace and grace and joy and hope. And may you be covered in the dust of your rabbi, Jesus. What kind of person do you want to be? Rob made a great question, right? And that's a great question, especially as we continue the challenge of our journey with Jesus this Lent. I mean, are we engaged in faith by practicing the small things, the subtle, unnoticed things that following Jesus requires that he just told us to do or maybe a simpler question might be why do we do what we do are we serving when no one else is watching or are we giving when no one notices are we praying in private I mean, in Lent, why are we fasting from chocolate or, uh, or social media or whatever that we decided that maybe we're giving up for this Lent? In other words, why do we do what we do? This week, we continue in our sermon series, Come, Follow Me, a, discipleship, a disciple's journey through Lent. And as we dis- continue to discover what it means to be a disciple today, I invite you to take a closer look at what motivates you to be a follower of Christ, kind of as a preventive checkup for the rest of not just this Lent, but the rest of the year. I mean, think of it this way. Most of us make an annual visit to the doctor for a physical or uh, another to an eye doctor for an eye exam, right? Plus, Most of us go to a dentist at least once a year, many of you twice a year, right? I mean, all three of those appointments are for what? Preventative care, right? To prevent or at least to catch something before it becomes a major issue. And this is exactly what Lent is all about. A season that we're invited to take a closer look at ourselves and ask, How am I doing spiritually? 
So we should begin this Lent asking ourselves questions like, what do I need to work on? How am I faithfully following the one I say that I'm a disciple of? Which all leads back to my original question, why are we doing the things that we're doing? Today, as I said earlier, we are the halfway point of the season of Lent. And to ma maintain or regain our focus, I want us to turn back, you just heard, from the Matthew 6 passage that I read on Ash Wednesday. In this passage, we are again reminded that an authentic faith is one that puts faith into practice through words and deeds as we seek to experience the presence of Christ daily. As you know, Lent is supposed to be a, a season of repentance. But it's also a season in which we are invited into a time of personal and, and corporate self-reflection and examination. Remember on Ash Wednesday, I invited us to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer and fasting and self-denial, by reading and meditating on God's holy word. These all are spiritual practices that allow us to be faithful disciples. But today, at the halfway point of Lent, I want to challenge you, each and every one of you, to do a checkup on how you are engaged in putting your faith into these Lenten practices. And here's the thing. Discipleship, hopefully you know this, is just not a Lenten thing. A once and done practice, but it's a daily decision, daily, to follow Jesus. A daily decision to seek after Christ as we shift our focus from ourselves to God. I mean, you see, Jesus clearly tells us in Matthew 6, we are to practice our faith continually and make sure that we have the right motivation. This morning, Jesus in the very first verse says, beware of practicing your piety before others. And what this tells me is that Jesus expects us that we actually practice our faith when others can't see. Just like we would practice a sport behind doors before we actually go out and play the game. Or the same way that we prepare in our homes quietly or in a library for a test before we actually have to take it. Or a project we have to spend hours in the closed door of our office, maybe in your own home office before you have a presentation at work. But here's the thing, it's more than just mundane practices. The good news is what, it's what gives us a faith that's alive and growing. So how do we do this? Well, this morning we're reminded the disciples of Jesus Christ practice their piety of faith through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Today, many follow the same paradigm of prayer, fasting, and giving daily to experience Christ in their life. And unfortunately, we're human, and our human condition often gets in the way of our discipleship. Far too often what we began as a true and meaningful way to practice our faith easily can turn into some kind of performance or just something we do rotely with never even thinking about it. An act of, for others to see our faith, of demonstrating to our family and friends or maybe to the people you sat with at church, man, aren't I a good Christian? For instance... When I first began doing Ash Wednesday services, years and years, it's become decades ago, hasn't it, honey? My family all went after to dinner right after that first Ash Wednesday service. And of course, I had completely forgotten that I had this black 
cross smudged across my forehead and, uh, as we had gone into this restaurant. And, and we received lots of kind of confused stares when we went there. And a waiter came by our table and she let me know that I had some a, kind of a smudge, a black smudge on my forehead. Now you got to realize that we were living in the deep south out in a country full of Baptists and Pentecostal churches. So I had to actually explain to her what Asha stood for and how they marked the beginning of our season of Lent. And after my explanation, I felt special and actually kind of prideful that I was displaying my faith in such a way that all could see it. And I felt like running over to that local Walmart store with my black smudge on my forehead and walk around and pointing to my head and say, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. But on the way home, I realized, what the heck are you thinking? I mean, initially it was innocent and allowed me to share my faith, but soon I wanted to be just like those we read in today's gospel, making a performance out of my spiritual discipline. Upon self-examination, I realized my human nature had taken over and led me into something that did not give God glory. Instead, it puffed up my ego and my pride. I mean, do you see the difference? It's not that the private, public act of receiving ashes on Ash Wednesday is inauthentic in your faith or in my faith. Nor is it inauthentic to wear ashes for the remainder of Ash Wednesday. Instead, the authenticity of the act of faith or piety is determined solely by the motivation behind what we are doing and displaying. Authenticity is not something someone can judge externally, but only you as an individual can determine your own motivation with self-reflection and examination. When I thought about my Ash Wednesday experience the very next day, I realized, man, I had missed the mark. I would missed the mark. I've lost sight of what it really was all about. Uh, I'm not the only one, though, right, when I do such a thing. I mean, all of us have allowed our human condition to get in the way of our discipleship. I mean, in this day and age of social media and Snapchat and Twitter and series and Facebook, I mean, selfies and Facebook and TikTok, right? It's easy to move from discipleship to self-promotion. Moving from God, all about ourselves. And all this goes back to the question, why are we doing what we're doing? And this question is just not for us as individuals, but I also believe it's a question we must ask corporately as a church. We need to take on a constant basis a really hard look at ourselves in the mirror and ask, why are we doing things as a church? What we are doing is to expand the gospel and the love of Christ. Or is it just to promote the church like an advertisement to get more members, to get more money? You see, it's really important, the things that we're doing, like taking care of the high school students that are at risk here in St. Charles that we do so well, or providing bicycles for clients that volunteers in medicine that needs that kind of transportation, or collecting our four special offerings of the PCUSA that we were promoted and put in a national magazine so we could proudly say, hey, look at us, what we're doing. Aren't we great? But is that why we're doing it? You see, it's a, it's a slippery slope, isn't it? I mean, all these things are really great, faithful things. But it really is about motivation, a matter of prayer, and the right attitude. Correct? You see, we need to, on a regular basis, examine our motives and ask ourselves, 
why we do what we do and truthfully ask those hard questions of whether we're focusing on us and what it brings to us or really is it all about God? Remember all I say? It's not about me. It's all about Him. So what is your motivation? Jesus gives us clear direction for determining our motivation when He says these words. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. By doing so, the focus will shift from you to God. And it's then you could begin to sense His grace, His love, His guidance. And what this tells me as a church and as individuals, we need to be willing to be quiet long enough to listen to God's Word, His quiet voice, so we could really reflect intentionally on ourself and our self-examination. And, and I need to explain to you what a spiritual examination is all about. It, it's a time of having our hearts open to be more open to the spacious love of God, to ponder our habits, our fears, our anxieties, our actions, and often our inactions, and reflect on all that distances us from our community of faith, from our families, from those lost and wandering. And it's important to note that self-examination does not mean to be harsh and self-critical because I get caught up in that so often. I'm so hard on myself. But that's not the purpose of it. It's a willingness to admit where we fall short, miss the mark, and to understand our humanity, to understand our woundedness, our pain, our struggles. Self-examination leads us into the way of making room to love more fully, more deeply, and more honestly. Self-examination actually helps us to repent and turn to the only one who could love us the way we are. And the good news this day is that through intentional self-examination and the reflection this Lent, we can begin to allow the Holy Spirit to point out where we have strayed, where we need to grow, where we can make room to love God and God's people more fully, more deeply, more honestly. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Lent, I want to invite you each and every one of you, to examine what truly motivates you in your life of faith. What motivates you to serve like Jesus? What motivates you to give sacrificially like the disciples? What motivates you to pray like our Savior? Is it to show others that, man, aren't I a good Christian? Are you truly doing it because you want to love the Lord a little, but you love to love Him more, more deeply, more fully, more honestly? This week, as part of your Lenten disciple, disciple, discipline, I want you to take a close look at what makes you do what you do. What motivates you? Are you living your faith authentically? Tomorrow night, which would be Sunday night, hopefully Margaret will remind you, I'm going to send you a daily examine that Richard Foster has done. 
It's a time of examination, and I want you to try to do that on a daily basis. It has a whole series of things that you should do. It should take you 15 minutes to 30 minutes. I put it in a little booklet form. But it's a wonderful example of how we examine our faith. And I hope it leads you in this halfway through Lent to realize that, man, you're not quite where you need to be. And even if you are, you realize, man, there's so much more that you could be doing. So I'll be uh, emailing that to you. And if you're not on my email list, uh, make sure you uh, let the church office and we'll either mail it to you or get you uh, on an email. So if you're across the country is watching that, just let me know and we'll, we'll get that to you uh, and make sure. And if you're listening on a CD, uh, we'll make sure that when you get that CD, you'll have that booklet and you could uh, join the rest of your family to do that. See, we're doing that because there are aspects that were once meaningful that we no longer do. And so this allows us to quit performing and, and start beginning to love God more fully, and then engage the practices of our faith that leads us to the cross. Let us pray. Lord of Lenten journeys and challenging callings, we make a show of our faith and devotion on far too many occasions, especially on Sunday morning. We pride ourselves in thinking our beliefs about you and concerns for others suffice to the kind of prayer that you call us to practice, kind of arrow thoughts and prayers, just little brief snippets. Too often we're more concerned about our retirement as we store treasures up in earth rather than in heaven by giving you a portion of what you bless us with. Lent is a time to return to spiritual practices that the lead to your divine wisdom and holy mystery. So as we respond to your call to follow as your disciples during this Lenten journey, we return our whole hearts as we humbly join together in praying in Jesus' name. Amen.
The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. God has given to us many good gifts and calls us to respond. Wherever we are, however we can, may the gifts we offer in these days bring hope to those who hunger for justice, bring healing to the grieving, bring community to those so alone in these moments. Let us now give in response to Christ's call to come follow him as his disciples. Creator and sustainer, may these symbols of your gifts bring light to a dark and chaotic world. Just as your truth brings joy and gladness to all, our gratitude for this blessing is made visible in these offerings. Receive our earthly treasure, our hearts, and our prayers, given freely to share your good news with others. Bless them and us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We come to a time now where we uh, share our joys and concerns with one another, and so we lift up our family and friends and our world. Um, so we work our way through our church directory as a church family. We remember some really faithful older members of our church that uh, are really close to both Margaret and I. We remember Byron Gordon. Uh, we know he lost his wife this last year. Uh, and uh, we also understand that he's uh, still struggling with a lot of health issues. Uh, and so we just pray that they can figure what's going on with him and that he can get stronger. Remember uh, someone that I consider uh, my, my mom, it's Sally Gribble, and what an awesome woman that she is. And so remember uh, her and what a faithful, healthy um, um, woman that she has been and, and to many of us has been such a great friend. And remember uh, Ron and Mary Hauser, and we're so grateful um, for them and his creativity, uh, a longtime school teacher, and Ron's been an artist and uh, very active in our community and, and giving with Shriners and, and uh, other organizations like that. And so we're so grateful for uh, these three different families. Uh, I've also been told uh, this day that... Uh, 
uh, one of Ruthie Farrell's good friends, Susan, um, has elevated count, um, cancer markers, and she's struggled uh, with cancer before and a number of other health issues. So this is really concerning. So remember Susan in her prayers. And here in Giddings Lovejoy, our regional uh, governing body, um, we are remember First Presbyterian Church in Brighton, Illinois, and their pastor, uh, Mark Weddleton. And uh, we just pray for God's blessing on them. Uh, and during this time, it's really, I know so many uh, pastors have struggled uh, and churches have struggled in, uh, during this time of pandemic and being closed or being hyper. Uh, uh, I mean, the kind of both live and, and, uh, and taping both. And so remember, remember them as well. I do know that Lou Ted had uh, outpatient surgery and he was in and out and he's recovering from that and hope that it makes his life a little bit more comfortable. Peggy Jackson's had another MRI or CAT scan, and she's scheduled uh, for surgery, we believe, on the 24th. So remember Pat, Peggy, she's uh, such a dear heart of ours and an, also an artist, and uh, has, is so lovely of writing Margaret and, and I great notes of en encouragement. So uh, there's so many other we've been praying for, but if you do have a specific prayer, please don't hesitate to let us know. Uh, we just pray that for you that are looking for COVID, that you have some issues. Uh, we know that Margaret got her first one uh, yesterday. Uh, if you're a school teacher, there's ways to go. You might have to drive to Mexico, Missouri like we did, but you can get it. Uh, and we know that they're opening up. So, But if you're having a problem you know, learning how to do this, uh, call Bev. Uh, Butler at the church office, and she will walk you through. And if you need transportation, either Bev and I could uh, could take you. So, but we are grateful uh, that uh, this pandemic is is showing signs of uh, relenting a little bit. If we just keep it up, that soon we will be back together again. So, with these joys as well as all our concerns, let us continue in prayer. God of Lent, help us as we continue our journey to the cross and resurrection. Help us discern the crosses that litter the landscape of our lives and your world. Enable us to see your resurrection power always and ready to work in the broken places of our lives. And empower us to step into those places where we can participate in your mission and work of bringing life out of death, tending the places that we walk in and journey to. And we pray for the world of our nations especially for those places where violence is wrecking havoc upon human lives and the lives of your creation. We pray for countless countries dealing with devastation caused by the pandemic, as well as those in our own country who's lost jobs or revenue or health care or loved ones during this difficult time. Help us to serve as agents of your love and care for all in our midst who are suffering, no matter the cause. Oh God, you have called us to be your witness, your light, your church, your family in this time and place. So keep us faithful in that calling and help us first and foremost love you and love one another. And by doing so, be witnesses in our world of what's it mean, what it means to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus, even as we live in our polarized communities. Empower us by such love to see each other as your beloved. And now on this fourth Sunday of Lent, remind us that one of the ways we engage in putting our faith into practice is by offering your good news to others, not only in words, but in deeds of love and mercy and peace and justice. As we offer names of people and situations we've been heavy on our hearts for your healing mercies, Remind us also that we stand in need of that same self, same healing love. Now be with us during this Lenten season. Give us hearts of great joy and courage to serve you always. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Though the world is dark, the light of the world goes before you. Know that God guides your steps and surrounds your life with his love. So go out into our world in the peace of God in Christ. Lift up the brokenhearted and stand with the oppressed. And let all that you do, do it in love as you love your neighbors as yourself. Have a blessed, blessed week. Amen.